Welcome to this video on fabricating the maxillary occlusion rim. You will see on our master cast that we have landmarks marked. We have the uh, center of the uh, residual ridges right and left. Have the uh, incisal papilla in the middle of it marked. We have extended those lines out onto the land areas. And we also have a mark six millimeters anterior to the middle of the incisal papilla. That will help us when we do our wax placement uh, later on. Okay, we already have our uh, light cure base plate fabricated. If it's a little bit loose, you can uh, lute it to the cast with a little bit of sticky wax. You also note that we have roughened up the uh, surface of the base plate material and we're now using sticky wax. That will help us adhere the uh, base plate wax to the base plate. Okay, now we're going to begin to heat up a sheet of hard base plate wax. We're going to form this into uh, a strip of wax so that we can place it on top of the hard base plate material. When you're heating your wax, watch it because it starts to get lighter as it gets warm and you want to get it warm all the way through. Fold it up uh, just like this. And then this won't be uh, long enough to reach from the distal of the first molar on each side. We're going to form it into a horseshoe and we're done and place it on top of the base plate. So this will just give you an idea. Uh, the section that's on the top right now, we want it to be approximately 10 millimeters wide because that's the width we want to end up with. Now we're going to form it into a horseshoe and place it down on the uh, base plate. And we want to keep in mind that we want the anterior portion to be approximately 6 millimeters anterior to the middle of the incisal papilla. And we want the posterior segments to be over the centers of the ridge. So this is just a matter of looking at it and putting it in place. Now we're going to seal that all the way around with a spatula. So we just take a hot spatula and melt that wax so it seals down to the base plate. We don't want this to break loose in the mouth. That would be very embarrassing. So we want to make sure that it's that it's well sealed and attached to the base plate. When we get around on the buckle, you can let any excess wax uh, go down towards the peripheral roll because we want to blend all this when we're done. There, I'm just cutting off a little bit of the excess on that side because that's way more than we need. Now we'll start out on the uh, buckle and the labial and we're just going to let this excess wax stay on the base plate and blend it towards the uh, peripheral roll. Okay, that's, now we're in pretty good shape with that. So we're going to just... Uh, we're checking to make sure we're over the center of the ridges and that we are approximately six millimeters to the anterior. Okay, we are now ready to uh, measure the anterior height of the occlusion rim. We want it to be 22 millimeters from the depth of the vestibule and that's measured one to two millimeters either side of the anterior frenum. So we've placed a mark on there we're now going to use a what's called a rim former. These are available from Blue Dolphin products. And this has a ledge on it. This ledge that you can see there will be placed on the Hamler notches. That's going to allow us to make our occlusion rim level horizontally, left to right. So we place that. We're going to heat it up. And when we get ready to do it, and then we're going to place that on the Hamler notch, and then we're going to pull it down till we get our height of 22 millimeters. So there you can see the marks on our Hamler notch. We left our base plate just slightly short in the Hamler notch area so we could see that. 
There you can see the relationship between the ledge on the rim former and, and the cast. So now we're going to begin to heat our uh, rim former up so that we can place it on there and melt the wax down to the level that we want, which will be 22 millimeters in the anterior. So we can see our mark and we place that in and then just begin to push it down. So you can see sometimes you have to heat it pretty good to be able to do that and it takes more than one time. See we're still a little short right there. So we're going to heat our uh, rim former up some more and then we'll bring it back over, place that ledge back on the hammer notch, pull the rim former down until we reach the uh, 22 millimeter mark that we made on that base plate. That'll give us the correct height for our base plate. Now you can see it's nice and level and smooth. Now what we're doing here is we're going to check to make sure that the labial aspect is approximate approximately six millimeters anterior to the middle of the incisal papilla. So we use the uh, landmarks that we marked on the cast. Now obviously that was a little bit over, so we're going to remove some of the wax to cut it back. And again, we just let that wax run down towards the periphery so that we begin to blend in that bite rim or occlusion rim. Okay, I think we're pretty close to six millimeters, so we're going to leave that alone. Now we're just double checking to make sure that everything looks right, that we're on the center of the ridges. And we're going to reshape this just slightly, uh, just to make it look nice, make it fairly symmetrical. And continue and now we're going to continue to blend the wax a little bit. We'll do some more of that later on. Okay, now uh, when, on the distal of these uh, occlusion rims, we don't want them to come back too far because it'll interfere in the mouth. Uh, if you if you have the wax come back too far, they will hit the retromolar pad and they won't be able to close all the way. So we want these to terminate eight to ten millimeters from the distal of the base plate. So I'm just checking that with a the ruler there. Now, the next thing we wanted to do is we want the, our base plate, or our, I'm sorry, our occlusion rim to be approximately three to five millimeters in the anterior, five to seven millimeters wide in the uh, bicuspid area on both sides. And then in the posterior, we want it to be between 8 and 10 millimeters. So I got pretty lucky there because those are right at 8 or 9 millimeters. So now I'm just going to mark this so I can I'll connect those lines together so we get a shape that is going to give us the uh, correct width in the anterior and bicuspid area and still maintain uh, 8 to 10 millimeters in the posterior. Now we'll just heat that blade up and cut that section out. And that'll give us the proper width on the occlusal aspect of that occlusion ring. Now we're just going to take our hot spatula and smooth it a little bit. And again, we're blending to the base plate. So that's primarily what we're going to be doing as we finish this up, is blending the wax and smoothing out the wax on the other base plate. And we're probably going to have to add a little bit of wax right there in the posterior. So you'll see us doing that because we want we want it to be uh, fairly full going up to the peripheral roll or border. 
and we want it to be nice and smooth. You can spend a lot of time making these look really nice. So I think it's important that they look good when they go in the mouth. It's important to the, the dentist and it's important to the patient that things we put in their mouth look good and that they're made properly. Now we're going to just take our uh, butane torch and very carefully flame the wax to smooth it out. Again, keeping in mind that as wax gets warm, it lightens in color and it gets very shiny just before it starts to melt. So we don't want it to melt and run. So we're, we're, we're through with the uh, flaming. And now what I've done is I've polished that with a little bit of cold water and cotton. So we have a nice smooth base plate, the inclusion rim. It looks good and will feel good to the patient and be very functional. And thank you for watching this video.